It was a rather dreary morning on the island of Sodor. A hurricane had recently hit the island, and it caused damage to certain parts of the mine. Some of the engines helped out with a cleanup operation to clear debris off the tracks from the storm. Thomas was holding his morning passenger run along his branch line with his two faithful coaches, Annie and Clarabelle. Boy, that was some storm, wasn't it, girls? Yes, indeed. I couldn't get any sleep from that thunder and lightning last night. I was afraid that the shed roof would fall on us. Don't be silly. The storm wasn't that strong, and it wasn't like the one that severely damaged Harwich School a few years back. Duck told me about that. Well, I suppose. But I'd be careful if I were you, Thomas. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Clarabelle. My branch line has been checked earlier and Dudley reported that there was no damage to the line. So everything's alright. But it wouldn't be for long. As Thomas puffed through a tunnel, he didn't know that a large tree branch had broken off and was now blocking his line. He didn't see the tree branch until it was too late. Huh? STOP! Luckily, no one was hurt, but Thomas's front was severely bent, and he laid on his side looking dazed and surprised. What's happened, Danny? He's derailed, Clarabelle. Oh, Thomas, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, no, ow! N um, no, I'm not all right. Ow! Paxton's first passenger train. Soon, help had arrived, and Thomas was put onto a flatbed, ready to be taken to the steamworks to be repaired. Toby came with Henrietta and took Thomas's train the rest of the way, and Eric took his little brother to the steamworks. Don't worry, bro. The accident wasn't your fault. I know, but I should have been more careful. <sighs> Still, you couldn't have known a tree branch fell onto the line, so you're not to blame. Yeah, I suppose so. But who's going to take Annie and Clarabelle now? Eric and Thomas soon arrived at the steamworks where the fat controller was waiting for Victor. After inspecting the damage, he spoke to him. It appears, Thomas, that you have taken more damage than we first thought. I'm afraid you'll be in the works for a while. But what about my passenger train, sir? Who will look after Annie and Clarabelle while I'm being repaired? I don't really know, Thomas. Percy and Shorby are busy with their own work, and Daisy is too busy on the Harwick branch to be spared. Eric, can you look after Annie and Clarabelle? Sorry, Thomas. I wish I could. 
but I'm busy with my own work, and I don't think Rebecca is available to look after your passenger trains. Let me think. Hang on. Maybe Paxton could do it. That doesn't sound like a bad idea, sir. Paxton is a good nature engine, and I'm sure he'll enjoy it, Shane. Are you sure this is a good idea, sir? I'm sure it'll be fine, Henry. Right, I'd better make some arrangements. Eric, can you take me to the Blue Mountain Quarry? Since, well, uh, my car is being repaired at the moment. Of course, sir. Climb aboard! At the Blue Mountain Quarry, Paxton was busy working with the narrow gauge engines and taking trucks of stone to the docks. He had just arrived back from the docks after delivering a shipment of stone there. Hello, Paxton. There's someone here to see you. Really, Reneus? Who is it? That would be me. Oh, hello, Eric. Didn't expect to see you here. Paxton? Thomas has had an accident and has been sent to be repaired. He'll be out of action for quite a while, and I would like you, Paxton, to take charge of Thomas's passenger trains on his branch line until he gets back. Oh, yes, sir. I would love to look after Annie and Clarabelle. But hold on. Who will do my work while I'm gone? Don't worry about that, Paxton. Norman has agreed to cover your work while you're away on Thomas's branch line. Now, head over to Napford Station. Annie and Clarabelle will be there waiting. Rato, sir. See you soon, Paxton. Bye, guys. <laughs> But deep down in his cooling fans, Paxton was a little nervous. He had never pulled a passenger train before in his life, and was worried he might mess up. I guess I better do the best that I can. When Annie and Clarabelle heard that Paxton would be taking them until Thomas returned, they were far from pleased about the news. They weren't too fond of the idea of having a diesel engine pull them, especially after what happened when they were pulled by Daisy and Diesel. He better treat us with care. I hope he doesn't race Bertie. My bogeys are still shaking after the last race Thomas had with him. If he even dares cause any trouble, we will complain. Indeed. Just then. Paxton arrived and backed down onto the two coaches, but he came up a little too quickly and bumped into them. Of course, it was an accident, but Annie and Clarabelle thought Paxton had done it on purpose. Thomas had an accident, so I'm filling in for him until he returns from his repairs. So we've heard. He won't last five minutes. Paxton shunted Annie and Clarabelle to the station platform. Gordon and Emily were there with their own passenger trains. They were surprised to see Paxton with Annie and Clarabelle. Hello, Paxton. What are you doing here with Annie and Clarabelle? Thomas had an accident, so I'm filling in for him until he returns from his repairs. You? Pull passenger trains? <laughs> What's so funny? I just find it funny that the fat controller decided to put you, a quarry diesel, in charge of a branch line passenger train. You have no experience with pulling coaches. After all, diesels are terrible at pulling coaches. Gordon, don't be so rude. Yeah, and I know for a fact that Boko pulls coaches sometimes. Well, Boko is a big mainline diesel that can pull coaches, but diesel shunters like you are terrible at pulling coaches. I mean, look what happened after Diesel stole Annie and Clarabelle from Thomas several years back. This made Paxton feel very cross with Gordon. Well, I can prove you wrong, Gordon. I'll prove that diesel shunters can pull coaches. <laughs> 
a chance of that. This made Paxton feel very upset. Don't listen to Gordon. I'm sure you'll do fine. Uh, thanks, Emily. Soon, it was time for Paxton to depart. But when the guard blew his whistle, Paxton started off much too quickly. Easy on the pulling! Easy on the pulling! Careful, Paxton! Coaches aren't trucks! But Paxton was too far away to hear what Emily had said. Paxton was making excellent time along the branch line. But while the train was on schedule, Paxton didn't realize how roughly he was going. Annie and Clarabelle bounced and jittered as the little diesel hurried along and the passengers didn't have a comfortable ride. Paxton, slow down! This isn't comfortable at all! Come on, you two! We have to be on time! When Paxton reached his first stop, he braked too quickly, causing Annie and Clarabelle to bump into him. Oh! Oh! Right on time! We've made good timing! But the passengers didn't think so. They complained about the run as they got off the train, but Paxton didn't notice at all as he was too busy thinking of how much of a good job he was doing. Soon, the guard's whistle rang out, and Paxton started off with a jolt! Not again! Not again! For the rest of the journey, Paxton continued to make mistakes as he traveled along the branch line would stop and pull out of the stations too fast, kept on bumping the coaches as he raced about, and caused the passengers' luggage to fall on them. At each station, the passengers would complain to the station masters, who notified the fat controller. He waited at Farquhar Station to see Paxton. Right on! Paxton! Ah! Sir? What is going on around here? I've heard that you've been rough with Annie and Clarabelle throughout your run, and the passengers have been complaining bitterly about it! What? But I... You wouldn't listen to anything we were trying to tell you. You treated us like trucks! I... Uh, uh, I... I... Oh... I'm sorry, sir. The truth is that I've never pulled passenger trains before. What?! Paxton, why didn't you say anything earlier? I trusted you with this duty! Ugh, forget it. Just forget it. You cannot be trusted with coaches. You will stay on the branch line and be taking on goods work until Thomas returns. Torby can take care of his passenger duties. V very well, sir. Paxton went up to the quarry to hide. He didn't want anyone to see him. As he sat in a shed trying to hold back his tears, Mavis pulled up and saw Paxton looking sad. Paxton? What are you doing here? I don't want to talk about it. Paxton, if you're upset about something, you can talk to me. I'm not going to be angry with you. I want to help you. Paxton wasn't too sure, but he reluctantly agreed. Oh, Paxton, I'm so sorry your first passenger run didn't go well. But it was only your first time pulling coaches. You just need to learn how to handle coaches. That's never going to happen now. The fat controller's never going to let me pull coaches ever again. Gordon was right. Diesel shunters like us are terrible at pulling coaches. That's not true at all. We can pull coaches just as well as steam engines. I should know because I've pulled coaches before. You, you have? But you're mostly here at the quarry, and I've never seen you take passenger trains. There are a few occasions when I have to take the workmen to the quarry in Henrietta. Whenever Toby is ill, he taught me everything I needed to know how to handle coaches, along with Henrietta's help too. 
You know I can talk to the fat controller and see if I can teach you how to handle passenger trains. That would be nice. But what about your work at the quarry? I'm sure he'll get someone else to work here for a few days. Paxton wasn't too sure, but he reluctantly agreed. Later that day, Mavis asked the fat controller if she could teach Paxton how to handle passenger trains. The fat controller agreed and made arrangements with the quarry manager to borrow her while Splatter and Dodge looked after her quarry work. Annie and Clarabelle were still furious with Paxton for how rough he was while pulling them, and they refused to let him take them out. We're not going anywhere with you again. You treated us like trucks and bumped us about. Oh please girls, I'm really sorry for how rough I was, but I want to learn how to pull passenger trains properly. Please give me another chance. No. No! But N -O, N o no! no. Oh. It's alright, Paxton. We'll practice using the other coaches instead of these two. Let them calm down. And with that, the two diesel shunters went to fetch some other coaches, leaving the two old coaches seething in anger. Over the next several days, Mavis taught Paxton everything to handle passenger trains by pulling them along with him. The passengers were very hesitant to have Paxton take them, but after seeing Mavis was with them, and how smoothly he was going thanks to her teachings, they began to warm up to the little green diesel. You're doing well, Paxton. Thank you both. Very comfortable ride. No problem. But whenever they <laughs> stopped at the junction, Gordon would tease Paxton every chance he got. Ignore him, Paxton. He'll get what he deserves. I hope so. Meanwhile, Henrietta was having a talk with Annie and Clarabelle about their behavior towards Paxton. I don't know what the fat controller was thinking of having Paxton looking after us until Thomas comes back. He has no experience of pulling passenger trains. I understand that, but Mavis has been teaching him how to pull coaches properly, and from what I've heard, he's doing a great job. Doesn't matter to us. He will always be rough with us. Just like Daisy and Diesel were when we were taken by them. Oh, I get it now. You're both letting those bad experiences you've had with those two blind you of the fact that Paxton will be just like them. You weren't there that day when Diesel stole us and took us on a joyride. I'm only thankful that Lightning and Sally were able to stop him. You can't just let those bad experiences hold you back from letting another Diesel pull you. Remember, Diesel is rude and nasty. Paxton is nothing like him. Did he ever say anything horrible to you like Daisy did? Well... No. That's enough proof to show that he's nothing like those two. Just give him another chance when you can. He does deserve one after all. Those words stuck with Annie and Clarabelle for the rest of the day. The next morning, Paxton was getting ready for the passenger run of the day. As he headed over to fetch the coaches, Annie and Clarabelle spoke up. Paxton, Paxton can we have a word with you? you? Uh, yeah? What's up? We thought this over, and we decided to let you take us out. Really? Yes. Just as long as you don't bump us during the run. Oh, thank you, girls. I promise I won't be rough. Mavis has taught me a great deal of how to handle passenger trains. Good to see you two giving Paxton a second chance. Henrietta talked us into it. Right then, you're set, Mavis? Nope. Because you're going to take this run solo. What? But I... It's okay, Paxton. You've learned a lot these past several days, and I think you're ready to run one solo. I know you can do it, Paxton. I believe in you. 
All right, Mavis. This is it. Paxton rolled smoothly down the lawn. The coaches ran smoothly, the passengers were comfortable, and the little green diesel was very careful. They were just passing Farmer McColl's farm when... Stop! Paxton came to a quick stop, and the coaches bumped into him. Luckily, no one was hurt, but the passengers were very cross. Oh, I will complain about this to the fat controller. Paxton hasn't learned a thing from Mavis's teachings. I don't think you'll have to complain to him about it. They're the ones he should complain to. Then, right in front of them was a herd of sheep that had broken through the fence and were straight across the line. Well, I never. <laughs> I guess we owe you an apology, Paxton. Paxton just grinned. He didn't mess up, and this incident wasn't his fault this time. Soon, Farmer McColl and his dog got the sheep off the line, and Paxton could continue the rest of his journey without any more problems. He arrived at Farquhar Station a little late, but satisfied. The passengers clapped and cheered for Paxton while Percy and Toby whistled and rang in delight. Well done, Paxton! You did a marvelous job. Thanks! Indeed! You've definitely improved a lot. We're sorry for how rude we were towards you. We didn't mean to upset you, Paxton. We just thought that you were going to treat us the same way Diesel and Daisy did when they took us. But after today, you've proven us wrong. Can you forgive us? Of course you do. I'm not one to hold a grudge. The two coaches smiled warmly. Over the next few days, Paxton continued to look after the passenger service on the Farquhar branch. The passengers enjoyed their runs with Paxton, and not once made the little green diesel shunter mess up. A week and a half later, Paxton was at the junction with Percy, Mavis, Eric, and Rebecca when they heard a familiar whistle. Thomas! Thomas you're, you're back! back. <laughs> Welcome back, little bro. <laughs> it's good to be back. I thought I'd never get out of the steamworks. Well, you're back now, and we're happy to see you again. Thanks. So, how did everything go on the branch line? I admit that I did have a bit of trouble when I took my first passenger train, but I did have a good teacher in Mavis. She taught me how to pull coaches properly. <laughs> it was no trouble, Baxton. Welcome back, Thomas. We're glad to have you back. Thank you, sir. And Paxton, I would like to apologize for being too harsh at you. I didn't mean to take my anger out on you for your first run with a passenger train. It's okay, sir. I should apologize to you, too. When you told me that I was to look after Thomas's passenger work, I was worried you'd be cross that I didn't know how to pull coaches. I just didn't want to disappoint you. Don't worry about it, Paxton. It's all in the past. You've done a splendid job and prevented a nasty accident from happening. As an award for your hard work, you will receive a new coat of paint. Mavis, you will also be getting a fresh coat of paint for how well you chop Paxton. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Then, the fat controller turned to the big blue express engine. Jordan? I heard you've been teasing Paxton of how he didn't know how to pull coaches. Well, uh, I may have said something, but... Still, you should know better than tease others about things they have no experience with. As a punishment, you will shut coaches for the other engines with Alfred for the next several weeks. And it's a good thing Henry returned from the Steamworks too, because he can take the Express in your place. What? But, but, tender engines are meant to shut it! No excuses. 
You will do as you are chilled, and that is final. Maybe this will teach you not to be so rude to little engines. Sorry, Paxton. <laughs> What's the matter, Gordon? I've no experience hunting. Maybe we could teach you how to shun properly. <laughs> <laughs> Take our advice. Scrap your tender and get yourself a nice bunker. You'll feel like a different engine. Oh, the indignity of it all. After Gordon had left, Paxton gave Thomas his coaches back and was ready to head to the diesel works with Mavis for their repaints. Goodbye, Paxton. Hope to see you again soon. Sign here. Well, you've definitely had a busy time, Paxton. Maybe the fat controller should let you pull passenger trains more often. That would be nice, but I'll stick to my work at the Blue Mountain Quarry. That is where I'm meant to work after all. Of course, Paxton. We should get to the diesel works for our repaints. Right you are. Goodbye, Eric. Goodbye, Rebecca. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Paxton. Paxton. As Paxton left with Mavis to the diesel works, he was happy to have helped out on Thomas's branch line. But all the same, he was looking forward to getting back to work at the Blue Mountain Quarry. He hopes that one day he will get to pull passenger trains again, now that he has some experience pulling them. Paxton looks forward to the next time he will get to pull coaches again.